like being able to take the time to space these out. I wish I could get even more time to do all that you know I would like to get done, but <laughs> there aren't enough hours in the day, years in the months in the year, and years in the millennium, or books that if they should be written, you know, like John said, would just be innumerable. We could say all that we would want to about Jesus. So let's see what the Lord would say. It's been an interesting day today, so I have no idea what may come. Christian experience, encounter with God. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Exodus 3.6 True Christian experience must always include a genuine encounter with God. Without this, religion is but a shadow, a reflection of reality, a cheap copy of the original once enjoyed by someone else of whom we have heard. It cannot be a major tragedy in the life of any man to live in a church from childhood to old age and know nothing more than real, nothing more real than some synthetic God compounded of theology and logic but having no eyes to see, no ears to hear, and no heart to love. The spiritual giants of old were men who at some time became acutely conscious of the real presence of God and maintained that consciousness for the rest of their lives. The first encounter may have been one of terror, as when a horror of great darkness fell upon Abram, or as when Moses at the bush hid his face because he was afraid to look upon God. Usually this fear soon lost its content of terror and changed after a while to delight some awe, to level off finally into a reverent sense of complete nearness to God. The essential point is this. These were men who experienced God. How otherwise can the saints and prophets be explained? How otherwise can we account for the amazing power for good they have exercised over countless generations? Is it not that they walked in conscious communion with the real presence and addressed their prayers to God with the artless conviction that they were addressing someone who actually was there? I'll be with, or I'll be straight up with you. If you don't know God, if you haven't had a personal experience with God, get real. Why bother? You're wasting your time. It's stupid. You're just exercising a religious foundation and playing games with intellectual assertions. Because in reality, God is real. Part of the reason why I do what I do, the only reason I do what I do is because God is real and he is evident in everything that I am about in my life, in my day, in my walk, in my way, in the choices that I make throughout my day. As I confront the things that I know that are directed by God, as he begins to work in my life, revealing those things all about me that I know are of him. And as he chooses to coordinate all those things together to make a perfect plan that I should walk therein and find out that he not only is alive but he's living in me to accomplish his will and purpose within the universe that I might be a part of in eternity if you don't know God you're not a Christian if you don't experience God all I can say is God help you. I don't know. I don't know and I can't say what salvation will be for you. But I do know this. If, if you seek God with all your heart, if you cry out to God, if you seek the living God and ask and desire and want with all of your being to know Him, to get to experience Him, he will open the door. He will reveal himself. He will come to you. He will speak to you. He will share with you his life, his heart, his son. He will reveal Jesus. Because if any man comes to the Father, he must first pass by Jesus. And the way to come to Jesus is that you must, as Jesus said, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. And when you call upon the name of the Lord, the Lord will answer you and say, you must be born again. And when he says you must be born again, he says that you must be born of the Spirit. 
and that the Spirit would draw you and cause you to come to Him and lay down your life so that you might take up eternity with God. Because laying down your life in this world means you get to experience forever in the world to come. This life is passing away, and your flesh is getting older day by day. And even you can see how a lot of your plans and anxieties and fears and worries and thoughts and processes don't fit and work. Mind you. And it's not because I've done anything right. In fact, it's because I've done everything wrong. But God, in His mercy and in His grace, in His love and in His forgiveness, He made everything right. And He can do the same for you.